Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Yosemite Server. And more specifically this week, we're going to take a look at the software update service. Now that we've got uh, some of the basics of our server configured and put together, and we've got our backups going, and we've taken a look at that strategy, now it's important that we keep our server up to date uh, so that we've got everything we need as we begin to configure the other services on our server. So what we're going to do is start with software update, and then we'll take a look at another way we can do that with the caching uh, service that's built into OS X Server. So this is the software update pane right here, and as you can see, it's a pretty, uh, pretty simple service. Uh, we've got uh, an access area here, and we've got our settings here. Now, what Software Update does is that uh, basically takes over the built-in service that's built into uh, every uh, OS X computer to check with Apple servers to see what updates your computer might need. So generally what will happen is Apple will push a new update, and your machine will then ping Apple's server, and will look for uh, updates. It'll see a new update is available and then ask you if you want to have that update happen. Then what happens is, is your machine will download that update from Apple server to uh, your computer and then use that download to actually update your OS. Now that works out great generally, but if you're running uh, in an environment where you're concerned about bandwidth, if every user then has to download the same update over and over again, it takes up your bandwidth and can become a problem in the long run. Uh, because if you're on bandwidth caps or if your network slows down when these downloads happen, then all of a sudden everything slows down and it's really not an efficient way to update your computers. What the software update service built into OS X Server will do is it will make your server uh, the update server for all of your other devices on your network. So it allows you then to download those updates to your server once and then all of the other computers inside your network will look to your server once we get it all set up for their updates instead of Apple servers. So it's only downloaded once and then everybody else just pulls it from your server. And so it saves bandwidth and makes it a, a little bit more efficient process. Uh, also, it allows you to determine what updates users get to use or not. And that comes in handy if you know there's an update that breaks certain software and things that you need to use. You can actually disable that update and your, and your users will not then use that update and then you have to go and fix whatever they've broken. So it can be a really uh, convenient way to keep your, uh, your machines up to date without having to worry about what they update and it puts you more in control of that process. So as we look at the uh, service here, we've got two tabs, Settings and Updates. And uh, let's take a look at the Settings tab for a minute. We've got two modes that we can use. We can use Automatic, where basically all the updates are downloaded from Apple and immediately enabled for all your clients. Uh, so basically, um, that li gives you very little control. It just basically transfers what Apple would normally do to your server. And you got to have some space on your uh, server to be able to handle all those updates that you're going to download. And because it enables them right away, your users can have access to any of them. Uh, you could do that or choose the manual mode right here. And what that does is that allows you to choose which updates you're going to download and enable. So that that way, uh, you're in control of what updates are available. You're also in control of uh, how much space you use on your server based on the updates you choose to download. And uh, they'll be uh, basically saved until you delete them. When you do the automatic, uh, any uh, downloads that are not supported by Apple anymore are automatically removed. So I, I generally recommend the manual mode just because that puts you more in control of what's going on. And that's what really makes this service worthwhile. Now, once you get that started, we've got an updates tab here where all of your updates will fill in in this area right here. So what we're going to do now that we've got uh, our choice here is we're just going to go ahead and throw the switch. And you can see right away now, we're available. Our updates are available at my server. Uh, we're all set. Service is ready to go. Got the green light. Got green up here. If I come over to this Updates tab, you'll notice now it says Reading Updates. So what my server is doing is it's contacting Apple right now. And it's looking at all of the different updates on Apple's server. And it's going to give me a list of those updates right here that I can choose from to determine which ones I want to have available to my machines. So what I'm going to do is let that read, and once it's done reading, I'll come back and show you what it looks like once this list is all filled out. Okay, here we are on the other side here. We can see that our uh, updates have been populated here. And as you can see, these are all of the different updates that Apple has made available uh, for their uh, operating system. And you can see some of the security updates, iPhoto, those sorts of things. And you can see there's 1,002 updates in here. 
uh, which is why I've chosen to do it manually as opposed to just downloading all of these. You can see you'd have gigs of data that you'd have to have available uh, to store all of these, but uh, you can see that these are the different updates and now they are available for you to use. Now you can sort these if you want, sort them by name, kind of up and down. You can sort it by version if you wanted to do that. Um, you can also sort it by date, which is probably the better way to do it. So here's the most uh, recent updates that have been available that have come out uh, that I could make available to my different machines. And as you can see, depending on the machines you have would determine the ones that you would want to make available. Now, once I've gone through this list and maybe there's some, you know, I want to make the Canon inkjet, inkjet printer software update available, I can come here. It says the status is available and I have the option to download it which basically just downloads it and puts it on my server, or I can download and enable it, which means it'll not only download it, but it'll make it available to all of my uh, other Macs that are on, on my network. And so those give me those options. Now, not only can I do it there, but if you come down here to the wheel, you got a little bit more information. There's the download and download and enable, and there's uh, keyboard shortcuts for it as well. Uh, but you can also view the update. You can do it right here from the menu or double click on it. And when you view the update, it gives you all of the information that Apple has on this update and what it changes. So that if you wanted to just take a look and see what you were updating, you could look at it here. Uh, you can also download and enable it from this menu as well. Uh, if it was downloaded, you notice here I can also uh, enable, disable, or actually remove it if I wanted to from these menus. Uh, I'm just going to say OK to that. Uh, the other thing I can do is actually check for updates if, uh, if I wanted to, just to see if the most current ones would show up. So as you can see, this really puts you in control of the various updates that Apple has available and allows you as the administrator uh, of your server and your system to determine which ones people can use. Uh, you could also check this automatically download new updates if you wanted to. If you said, hey, I want to have all the new updates downloaded, you could do that. Uh, but again, you lose some of your control in, in making that happen. So that gives you an idea of how a uh, software update works. Like I said, it's a, it's a great service to be able to track these updates as well as determine which ones you want to use. Uh, it's different than the caching service, which we're going to talk about uh, in a future screencast, uh, because these are just Apple's updates mainly to the system and their software. Caching server deals with anything that you've got uh, downloaded from the Mac App Store or from iTunes. And so we'll talk about that, like I said, in a future screencast. Now. A couple of things I want to show you before we go. Uh, the first thing, you're probably wondering where are these downloads and where are they put once I download them. Uh, if you look in the finder here, if you go to your server, library, server folder, software update has a folder here. It, it's in the data. And then if you kind of come over, data, content, downloads. And so then all of your downloads are here in its own database. So it stores them actually on the, uh, on the server itself. And, uh, and so that's where that puts it. Now, one more thing that I do need to show you, and that is what, how do you set this up to be used by your machines on your network? Because your machines are automatically programmed to take a look at Apple servers. Now you want to turn them over to your servers. So in order to do that, we're going to need to uh, pull up Terminal and take a look at how that works. Okay, here we are over on Terminal. And basically what you want to do is go to one of your machines that you want to use your software update server. And you want to put in this string, this sudo defaults write library preferences, com .so Apple software update catalog. You want to put in your server's uh, address right here. You can see I've got mine right there with 8088 for your index to your catalog. And what this will do is this will point that machine to your server to look for software updates instead of going to Apple server to look for them. And so that's one of the things you want to put in there. Now, if for some reason you want to change this port to something different, like 80 or whatever you want to use, uh, you could do that. Uh, what you would do, let me just pull up another terminal window here, is you would just put in sudo server admin settings software update port to use and then put in the port that you want and that'll change the port on your software update server. So uh, that kind of gives you an idea of how that works. So that's all we have uh, for this week on software update. Hopefully that uh, shows you how that works for you and you can determine whether or not it would be an advantage for you to use it or not. Uh, again, if you've got bandwidth issues, this is a really great tool to simplify that process so that it only downloads once instead of multiple times. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.